interesting that the ardent atheist Richard Dawkins says that the point of evolution is to produce objects which have the appearance of being designed. He's an atheist, he doesn't believe they were designed, but he says they have the appearance of being designed. Well, I'd say they look like they've been designed because they have been designed. That's pretty logical. Now, what I said about metabolism, one thing you need for the living cell is an energy source. Now, in the body, we have an energy source called ATP, and it stands for adenosine triphosphate. This is the molecule of ATP. Now, what happens with ATP is you've got a very strong bond here, and what it does is it chops very high energy. So, when it chops this bond, it releases lots of energy. And that's the energy currency of the body. It's so important. Uh, that in fact your body would probably be making about half its own weight in ATP every day and then consuming it. And cyanide works by stopping ATP being produced and it causes death in 30 seconds. So it gives you an idea of how vital ATP is for life, the energy currency of the body. But now we know, um, thanks to research done only in 1997, that the ATP is, mo is made by this tiny molecular motor. This is the world's tiniest motor, and the discovery was regarded as so important that they, they won the Nobel Prize. That was only about five years ago that they won this. And it's so complicated, I can't even draw it for you properly in, in this thing. This is only a, a schematic. See, each of these uh, ones here, each of these ones here has about 500 subunits and arranged in a very precise way. And it's spinning about 10,000 revs per minute. So you listen carefully, you might hear it whirring. Because they're in each of your cells. But here's an example of it in very, very slow motion. This is the profile view. Of course, this is going about 10,000 revs per minute, though. And here's a top view of it. And every rotation, it produces three ATP molecules. But this molecule is vital for life, and yet it, it's, it's an incredibly complicated motor. You couldn't have life unless you had this motor to produce the energy currency. So it looks like this, life, this motor must have been there right from the beginning. And I'd say that because uh, this motor is so much better, so much tinier, more efficient than any motor we can design, I'd say the design of this motor is far more intelligent than any motor designer we have today too. Some uh, cells, this is a simple cell, has a, another type of motor. Uh, this is probably not essential for life, but it's still very interesting to see how complex even a so-called simple cell is. The bacterium, a germ, has the, a, a real electrical rotary motor here. This is a rotary motor. I'll, I'll actually ha be able to have it animated for you. And what this motor is doing is it's making a wave in this whip-like cord called a flagellum. This is a flagellum here. And by the whip-like movement that the motor generates, the germ can propel itself through the liquid it's in. So it's amazingly complex uh, things. Even in a simple cell, you look at it in more detail, you find there's incredible layers of complexity there.